What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Love and Rice Podcast with me, your host, Aunt Ma, and host, Christina Ma. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I like having these uh, podcast episodes with you because, you know, it's another project that we've created. And I think it also gives us a chance to connect and communicate more, too. With work. I mean, if you have to put it that way, or we could see it in a better... That's how I always see things, but you always think about it You always see things... No, you just said you just saw it as work. Yeah, because that's what you've ingrained in me. But I just said that this gives us an opportunity to communicate and get to know each other better and connect. This is what happens when you're married for over 10 years. Uh, And this is what happens when you have kids because you forget how to communicate with each other. I never forget. We just have to understand better. (laughs) All right. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about, did we have kids too young? And so um, we we had our first kid when I was like 33. Yeah. So we had our first kid in our early 30s, pretty much. And that's pretty much the latest you can really start because... At a certain age, women, you know, by 35, you guys... We are considered high risk. You're not as fertile anymore? Or like, what is it? Um, I guess that that is one thing. um, Because as you get older, you you know, your clock just starts to slow down a little bit. But um, I think it's also... There's more health risk as you get older too. So there could be more complications. Um, There could be issues with the child. There could be a lot of like abnormalities that come up the older that you get. I think because we had a miscarriage the first time, mm-hmm. you know, I, I say we because we went through it together, even though you had the miscarriage. Yeah. But it's still like, I don't know, I hear a lot of things about women always say, why do the men always say we? They didn't go through it. They didn't go through giving birth and all that stuff. But like, I, I don't well, know. I was I mean, still there. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever felt that way before. Like, because every time we've talked about it, I've always said we too. Because um, I felt like even though I went through the whole physical pain and emotions and like all the feelings of it um i feel like you were there mentally and you were there to take care of me physically so i do think like we did go through the miscarriage together and the pregnancy and everything else right, that's why i don't get it when these women say those things i just thought about it you know why some women will say that when um the husbands are like oh we went through this or we were pregnant i think because um in a lot of relationships there are men who are not really involved Oh, it's the ones that did it on their own. Yeah, like, well, they did it on their own or like their partners were just not around and they didn't give that moral support or emotional support or that anything. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, who knows? But I think um, one of the reasons why we started early is because one, after having the miscarriage, we we really understood that it's not easy to make a baby. Like it takes time. Mm-hmm. People think, okay, let's just start trying. You can have a baby. Right. Like within a month. Yeah. But it it took us like three to four months for you to even get pregnant. Right. And then when something happens, then you got to go over it again. Right. Yeah. Because there's this cycle that you have to go through and you have to time it with your menstrual cycle, your ovulation cycle. And uh, if you want to take it a step further and go by maybe gender, you know, there's certain times that you would have to do it. Um, After the first miscarriage, I was like, okay, if this keeps happening... At least we have a couple years right now. Yeah. You know, so I, that was one of the reasons why I wanted to start having kids young in case we were going to run into more trouble. Yeah. And I think it's um, interesting that you say that we started young because um, having kids in your early 30s back then, that seemed like you, that was like late. it was too it was yeah, very late for sure. Our parents had um, had us when well not us but like our siblings and stuff when they're like in their 20s yeah like early early 20s 20s, yeah Yeah, i get that but like even now in the modern days if they if you live in a state where there's not much going on like in a major city like in utah yeah like utah where it's a little boring (laughs) then yeah there are a lot of women who are 21 having kids right right and it's normal but when you live in la or new york you know, something like that, where you're just always busy and you're focused on yourself. Mm -hmm. Like no one thinks about having kids until their thirties. Yeah, that's true. And there are a lot of people in their thirties who aren't even married yet because they just haven't found the right person. Yeah. Or they're just not trying to because they're so focused on everything. Right. True. And so, you know, being from LA, I feel like we had it young. Mm -hmm. Oh, I agree. Yeah. Cause we were actually, 
one of the we were the first people in our groups that got married first. Yep. And we waited so we were married for about five years and then try to have kids. Right. And no one had kids at our time. It was more yeah. of like the teen uh, moms or dads and stuff who had kids like way before us. Yeah. So we didn't really have friends that we could relate to, even though we had kids like in our early 30s, like none of our friends had that experience or or would hang out with us because they just couldn't do the things that we were doing. That's one of the issues with having kids too young. So we were the first ones in the groups, like you were saying. Yeah. So we had no one to talk to, no other parents to be around. Our kids don't have other kids to hang out with. Right. You know, so... You know, obviously, you could join like mommy groups, daddy groups, or whatever it is, go to playgrounds and meet people. But it's so different, though. It is you different. Know? When you have like your tight circle and you guys are all in different paths, you know, like you, it, it's hard. Yeah. And then we start drifting away from friends because all we do is do family stuff. Yeah. Like, um, I'm in a few like mommy groups, like on Facebook and stuff. And then I will always see posts and people are always like, oh, yeah, we have mommy groups. Like, I feel like moms and dads, like I, maybe more so of the moms, because I don't really hear dads talking about it too much. But I feel like moms always feel like they're isolated and um, they're always so like consumed with their kids and focusing on them that they just are. I don't know what I don't know how to explain it, but it's just it makes it hard to be able to focus on like your friendships and stuff. Well, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. So there's a lot of times when we have friends and um, we don't get to hang out or whatever because we're not in the same world. Right? Yeah. And so th at that moment, I will feel isolated and I'll think about that all the time. But at the same time, I'm still focused on so many other things that I just keep trying to move forward. Yeah. And I think also um, with having kids, even now or compared to before, um, it's gone to the point where if we have friends that are over and they don't have any kids, um, I'll say, hey, OK, you know, I'll just deal with the kids. You go hang out with the friends. So I'm still like in that mommy world, whereas you can go and hang out with like our friends because one someone's going to have to watch the kids. So that's kind of like a separation or a division there already. Those times are so rare, though. It is rare. But it's also at the same time where I'm like, I just wish we had sitters and didn't have to worry about the kids where we can actually both go out and have time away from the kids together rather than like right. um, having to schedule our time like apart from each other. That's why a lot of people say you have grandma and grandpas to help you with those things. But before we moved to Vegas and we're living in LA, we didn't even have our grandparents or their grandparents to really help too much. True. You know, like they, they tried, but you know, they're just so busy. My parents are so busy. They're, my dad is retired, but he's busier than ever. Yeah. My mom's not retired. Your so mom works still, a lot. Yeah. So they're not there. Uh, if we really need them, they can cancel stuff. But yeah. Basically, they, they run their own lives. Yeah. Right? And, and my parents, they had a store for a long time, like over 10 years. And um, they were just working all the time. And uh, they recently, you know, sold the store and they... I was like, okay, they're going to have more time to help us watch the kids and we're going to be able to do more things. Um, but then it just started to become an obligation to them because once they were finally free from working like 24 seven, they're just like, you know, like now is a good time for me to travel and to go here and do all these things that I want to do. So then we're still left on the same boat with yeah. not having any so help. <laughs> that, that's one of the things like when we were having kids young, I was like, that's great. We're going to have grandparents who still have energy to help us. Yeah. And they're going to want to spend so much time with them because yeah. that's how I don't know if it's with Asian families specifically, but with my family, um, like we were always over at our cousins' houses and my parents were hanging out with like their brothers and sisters, our uncles and aunts, and the kids were just playing with the kids. Like they didn't even have to watch us. We were watching ourselves. Well, that's that's where we're doing it wrong. So um, like you said, we would you would be playing with your cousins, right? So your yeah. parents aren't watching you. Mm -hmm. They're leaving the responsibility to the all the kids. other family members. Yeah. Right. So what we're doing is we're trying to put the responsibility on our parents, on the grandparents. Mm. But instead, we, we should be going to your brother's house and the kids should be playing. And that's that's where that's at. That's true. And I think um our parents before were so like 
very chill about watching us like so they're just like you go off to your own thing but i think for us now we're just like oh be careful don't get hurt like we're just <laughs> i think there's two different kinds of asian parents or asian grandparents uh one is you know they're gonna they can't wait for their kids to have kids so they can have grandchilds and play with them and take care of them mm -hmm. move in with their kids and take care of the grandkids right right and then there's the other asian parents that are like nah you're gonna learn responsibility. I did this for you for 18 years. Now it's your turn. I'm gonna watch you suffer. Yeah, that's 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 our parents right now. Yep. <laughs> and then my mom has always said that um, you'll know what it's like to be a parent when you're older and you have your own kids and they get older. And basically, just saying like, "Hey, your karma is gonna be the attitude that your daughter has." And I'm like, "Oh no." Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> oh no. Um, you know, one of the biggest reasons personally for me why I wanted to have kids super young is because, you know, I love basketball. Yeah. Right. And so my dream was always to teach basketball to the kids. I was like, if I can teach Leia, you know, all about what I know from basketball, then she might be a really good player in the women's league. That's true. Right? High school and whatever it is well even for both kids yeah yeah i mean it's harder for for the men because there's so much more competition right like i can you know i i don't know but basically i had i just always thought that i would have the energy to be able to play basketball with them like i can be aggressive with them and be competitive i don't want to be this old guy that's like sitting on the chair and trying to coach them from far away that's true you know? because um like because when we were dating and going out for the longest time like you were still playing basketball with your dad and he was he's older right and he was um playing basketball with like these old guys yeah. like guys who could be retired basically they were retired oh my god yeah we're <laughs> they my were. dad played with like so he was like 60 and he was playing with 60 to 80 year olds sometimes there's some 30 or 40 yeah. year olds and then i would go play with my dad and there was a point when i was like you know what I should start recording me playing with my dad because yeah. he only has a few years of basketball life left. So what I realized was that, um, you know, I wanted to have the footage for myself. I want to have footage for our kids to see that grandpa was playing, yeah. you know, and I just wanted those moments because my whole life was with my dad. The relationship was all about basketball, you know. So when he had me in his early 30s as well. And when I was playing with him, I was like in elementary school. He was trying to teach me and we'd play one-on-one -on -one all the time. And he would block my shot, and things <laughs> like that. So Your dad was a really good basketball player. He was, yeah. For someone who didn't grow up around it. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, I'm glad I got about two to three years of some basketball footage with him. Yeah. You and, know? and you guys were playing consistently too. Yeah. So now it's like, I want to get footage of me playing basketball with Enzo. Yeah when he's five and then at eight and then at 10 and like until he keeps growing and growing and it's like it's such good memories for yeah us, and know? i think it gives you guys something um like a common ground something you guys have in common and it's like a connection that you guys can share which for makes sure you bond more. it's just being able to make these videos and playing with your family members like that and you get to pass down the videos that generations never got to meet you. yeah that's one thing that i regret because i'll always ask my parents like hey do you have any baby photos of me or kids like kid pictures of me and i rarely have any yeah and it's so sad like i don't have any any memories to look back to like i hear stories but i wish there was something that i could have watched yeah because our time we didn't have digital cameras i mean we had uh camcorders yeah and there's a couple videos of you know my dad having a camcorder with the family stuff but true you know they're kind of like lost tapes now i don't even know where they are <laughs> at least you have some now now we can do everything online right yeah you know, do dropbox all that stuff or or iclouds and so now with the recorded video that I made with me and my dad playing basketball you know his grandkid enzo can watch it and then when enzo has kids they'll watch it be like wow great grandpa and grandpa yeah. used to play together wow they were so young that's so cool that's probably one of the better benefits of having kids when you're young. It's being able to play sports with them or being active with them. Yeah. I think I also just wanted, yeah, I wanted to be able to keep up with them for sure. And I didn't, um, I remember when I was growing up, I, if I would see parents and like their parents almost looked like grandparents and I'd be I like, know. oh man, I don't want to be that parent that has to take care of like a little five-year-old when I'm like filled with white hair and stuff.
Do you know how tired we are every day from playing with the kids and doing chores and responsibilities for the kids? Like, I'm so tired every night. Can you imagine if we were older? Mm -mm. I can't handle that. I don't think we'd be able to. Like, I I don't know. Right? (laughs) So I think it's a good thing that we have kids young. Yeah. um, I almost feel like uh, if we could have, it would have been great like if the first pregnancy actually happened then we would have had um we would have had the first child like yeah a year younger like two years younger yeah yeah i think that would have been a perfect time because i feel like i would have even more energy and i would be more enthusiastic about things um and i would um i I feel like i'm pretty involved but at the same time, I'm also trying to like balance everything else around the house and work and stuff. But um, if I had more energy, then I would probably be like, hey, let's take you to do this um, or take you to do more outdoor activities where I have more energy to do it. Do you regret not trying to have kids when we first got married in our 20s? No, not at all. If we did, let, let's say we had a Leia at that time, she'd be 10 right now. No, like, <laughs> no, no, you know. When I was younger, I always knew I wanted to get married and I knew that uh, I want to have kids. And I always gave myself um, a timeline of that's going to happen when I'm 25. But I don't even think I met you when I was 25. It was like 27. Yeah, I think so. And even then, like we we were definitely not ready to have kids because we were just getting everything out of our system. We're traveling, you know, we're hanging out with JK a lot. Like I felt like there's so many opportunities that we had to take for ourselves and to grow um and i i just don't think i was ready for kids even though yeah, like, our life was just starting together, yeah for sure yeah once i hit 25 i was like that's why we waited nope. five years to have kids i think so yeah good idea all right so we're on the same page here for once just oh, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast episode. Uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we put all of the videos on here on the Ma Family channel. Also, our Instagram Ma Family is where we'll put a lot of our uh, shorts and reels, so you'll catch that as well. And so, make sure you follow us on all podcast platforms: Amazon, okay, Apple, Spotify, all right, and Google. Those are the four main ones, but pretty much any podcast platform you can, you guys listen to your your podcast on. That's where we are. Yeah, and that's why I leave it up to you to say all of them. All right, so thank all right. you. <laughs> all right, guys. So we hope you enjoyed this. Write down in the comments what topics you want us to talk about, and we'll we'll do it. So we'll see you next time.